And there it is, the XVW King of the Valley Championship belt. And there is the new XVW King of the Valley Champion. A championship that some say he won by a uh, nice little um, bit of luck, we'll say, as he took advantage of somebody who has fallen in the ring. Nonetheless, it is a victory. It is a new champion, but today he's got to face Riley Rose. What a competition that is going to be. How are you prepared for this first defense? There is no preparation like a king, right? So before we get to Riley Rose, we are going to get to the coronation of myself and when you will see a king in a bidding and a fitting as is the XVW King of the Valley Championship, I will tell you something. XVW has disrespected me, has pushed me around, made me fight the like of Ron Mathis, Bruce Gray, and even John Murray, which that never happened, thank God. But... Today is the day that a dawning of a new era in XVW. You know how great Gary Gandy is. They know how great Gary Gandy is, but tonight, right now, we will find the fitting of a king and there's no head better to be crowned than mine. And at the end of the night, Riley Rose, you will fall beneath my feet and kiss them like every king has before me. But, Riley Rose, I will break you down inch by inch and you will be just another victim of soon to be King Gandhi. Wrestling Kings When it comes to a show Be ready for the bows Cause they ain't slow Sit right in the front row Cause it gets crunk No Come on, Gandy, give that crown up. And he still has the belt around his waist. That's it, hand it over, hand it over. Give it to the referee. And now, holding it up for all to see. That's what it's all about. Now finally we might be about to start. Yes, there it is. And Rose looks like he is ready to go. Looks to be in incredible condition. Obviously he has not been sitting around eating Cheetos since last time he's been in XPW. Color and elbow tie up now. Still holding the size advantage, and look at that! Nice takedown! Nice leverage move. Rolls him up now, one! Only a one count. A little too early to go for a pinfall. Rose saying that close. Uh, wasn't that close. Only a one count. Oh, and now Gandy. Claiming a hair pull. There was no hair pull whatsoever. Don't pull the referee's hair! High up once again. Gandy should have the power advantage here with his sheer size. Comes up with a nice wrist lock. Rose twist out of it, nicely done. Goes for a reversal, almost loses it, but hangs on. Hammer lock applied and Gandy quickly going to the ropes. Riley wants to uh, pick up the pace a little bit. Obviously sticking to wrestling. Gandy, however, wants to keep it as slow as he possibly can. Obviously speed is in the fact of Rose, who 
just delivered a nice side Russian leg sweep. Oh, now look at this. He didn't quite have the body weight he needed. The whole candy down with that maneuver. And as Raleigh came in, he got caught with that forearm. Gandy just waiting for him. Mark of a veteran. And these two know each other so well. They know what to expect. Not a lot of homework had to be done with these two. It's just like a nice homecoming. And now, Rose with a big knife edge chop. Irish whip coming up. Reversal. And now look at that. Kick to the midsection by Rose. The rope. Oh, 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 oh. Danny, I'm surprised. He was able to get up so quickly, but does the right thing. Rolls to the outside. I think that one really caught him off guard. As I said, Rose is going to have the speed advantage. And he just stepped aside, but Rose saw him coming. Again, this is a match of two people knowing each other so well, knowing what to expect. And again, Candy knew what Rose was going to do. Rose knew what Candy was going to do. Candy's not watching now. Uh oh. Look at that. Oh, he got him. Nice super kick there. On the ring apron by Rose. First major shot of the match so far. And now off the top rope, here comes Rose. To the outside. Unbelievable. Matchup of who was going to get that first shot in. Three, Speed paid off in this case. Four. But Gandhi is not out of it, not by a long shot. This one far from being over. Rose missing with that roundhouse kick. Big right hand by Gary. The champion now setting him up. First neck breaker. Oh, and the Irishman is feeling that one. Oh, the champion is proud of himself. I'm sure, he, I'm sure he'd rather be called the king than the champion, but uh, champion a little more accurate. And now Rose into that steel post. Shoulder first. And a kick to the posterior just for good measures. One. Wow, did you hear that knife edge challenge? Referee telling him to let him out of the corner. And he's saying, why don't you disqualify him? I'm sure he'd be happy with a disqualification loss because then he keeps the championship. And of course, let's talk about what that championship means. The King of the Valley champion can demand a title shot at any time he wants by cashing in that championship. Any championship, any champion, any time. It's a matter of timing, taking advantage of it. So it is definitely a prestigious belt to hold. And now it looks like he might retain. Only a two count. And Rose now is gonna need some cheers from the crowd to feed off that energy. Fighting back as Rose with several right hands. Uh oh, comes off the ropes, but he gets caught with a backbreaker. And you can tell that Gandy was just waiting for him. And it all comes back to knowing each other so well, knowing what to expect. And he looked like he was trying to pull some hair, but Riley has none. Is Gandy not above pulling hair if it was there? And now Rose now tries to kick, but it got blocked. And now a couple more. And here he comes all the way across the ring. Buddy, wow, he got caught. A rock bottom uh, variant. Now for the cover. One, two, only a two count. Champion thinks it was three, but it was not. He did 
didn't really have that leg hook the way he needed to use Rose's weight against him. And now you hear the crowd clapping for Rose, trying to give him their energy, if he can feed off of it. Oh, and another kick to the spine. Oh, wow! Good night! One, two, and I can't believe it! How did he kick out of that? That was right on the money. And now he's got that dragon sleeper applied. There's been no submission thus far as Rose is trying to get out of it. How did he get to his feet from that? What abdominal strength that took! Now Gandhi fighting back. What's gonna happen here? Glancing blow the super game. Oh! Insaguri takes the champion down! And now both competitors are down as the referee lays the count on both of them. Looks like Gandhi's gonna get up first. Oh, nice kip up by the challenger. Here he comes. Elbow in the corner. And he's down. Oh, wow. And I think this is sensing victory and a reversal by the champion. Uh oh. Tried to kick, but he got caught face first to the mat. Goes the champion. Faked him out with that kick, got him with that forearm shot. I don't think that's going to do it, however, as Gandhi was right by the ropes. Great wing, ring awareness by the champion. The challenger a little frustrated with himself. And he went for that pin so close to the corner. And now it looks like he's going to ascend the ropes again. He had success with that earlier on. Up to the top goes Rose. Oh, nobody home for the Centon. And that could cost him. Here comes Danny, just a glancing blow with that kick. Tyler still in his feet, that one on the, on the money. That's gotta do it. One, two, I can't believe it. Gandhi did not hook the leg. What a mistake by a veteran. Had he hooked the leg, I do believe he would have retained right there. What a mistake by the veteran. And I think he's a little frustrated with himself realizing the mistake that he made. But can Riley capitalize on it, take advantage of it? I don't know what he's got left. Big suplex coming. Oh no! Look at that! Nice change up. Looks the length of time. One. Oh, roll up. Who's the One. Two. We almost had a new champion there. As Rose showing that he still has something left in the tank. Oh! One. Two. He got. No! He kicked out. I thought we had a new champion. What an opening match we have here today. Imagine yelling April Fools for each and every kick out in this match. Oh, we are at Odd Bodies Music Room. We could have made a drinking game out of this one. Two of them still going at it. A series of forms by the champion. Missed with that big chop. Kick to the midsection by the challenger. Double leg trip. Texas Cloverleaf coming up. If he can get him over. And he's got him. Oh no, he, he couldn't hold him, he couldn't hold him. Cradle now. One, two, he got him.
What an opening match. And what a maneuver to retain. And still, You heard it, still your King of the Valley champion. A king down on his knees. You don't see that too often. But who are they trying to fool? Dirty Dax Knight. And his brother, Travis Alexander Prophet. Obviously some intimidation tactics. Saying things are going to be a little bit different. What does he mean by that? Who let him in there with those baseball bats? Busy bad mouthing the well that hasn't changed. They always get quite distracted by the crowd. Former XVW tag team champions, high times, or the back alley boys, or whatever they want to be called. Price asking the right question. Are you here to wrestle or not? certainly taking their sweet time. Maybe, maybe their new look didn't quite uh, intimidate the way they had hoped. Well, come on, gentlemen, get in the ring. Meanwhile, the tragedy boys are ready to go. Mr. By the Book with that book of wrestling. Has every rule in the book, and therefore every loophole as well. Meanwhile, Tap and Dax still running. Oh, yeah, you better run. Now, where? Security needs to get that fan back. Cannot have fans touching the wrestlers. If so, we are not liable for any damage that may occur. Now, if we can just get Saturn Price into his corner, we're ready to go. Finally, one individual from each team. Call that fan the grandpa. There's the bell. This one underway. Finally. <laughs> Look at Gaston LaRoe. He is ready. Another elbow tie up. Gaston quickly comes up with that wrist lock. Oh, look at him take him over. That's the thing, when someone twists that arm too much, you gotta go with it, or that shoulder's gonna come right out of socket. Oh, look at that, Dax tried to roll out, but Gaston stayed with it, and rolled right along. Almost made a tag there. Didn't quite make it. And now after stomping on the foot, Dax reverses, and now applies an arm bar, and puts the pressure on the shoulder. Trying to circle him into his own corner if he can. But an arm drag stops that. And now this stop has an arm bar of his own applied. And look at the way that knee is over the head to prevent Dax from getting up at a nice kick out. Nicely done, gotta give him credit. Another arm drag takedown. And a 
again. Dirty Dex, he fights himself on the mat. And a disengageous position. And a gap tag almost made. But the rule holding tight, not allowing it to happen. Pin attempt by Daxi, but to no avail. Now's his chance to tag. He should have tagged now. Apparently, he wasn't quite sure where he was at. Lost his bearings a bit. Missing with the Insiguri. And now that go behind, right again. Dax in the corner. Haru tried to roll him up, but Dax held on. Oh! Nice German suplex. Down for the cover, hooks the leg. One. Only a one count. I don't think he would have gotten him with that anyway. But Travis is not going to take any chances. Tag made and here comes the huge Saturn Price. With a knee left in the corner. Here comes the road. Double knees. Down for the cover. Referee out of position, unfortunately. But I don't think a three count would have been made there because Travis was already in the ring to break that up. Irish sits right in the corner. Oh, and he hit that corner hard. Oh, he's threatening chops. Oh, wow. One more time. I don't think Knight wants that. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Oh. Oh, does Travis want some help? Big backdrop. Well, he's been unable to tag in legally. So I guess he had to get involved somehow. Oh, and it's a girl. By Dax Knight now. Poke to the eye. Oh, looks like a side slam coming up, yes. As Knight is back down, one, two. Travis reached in, but Knight able to kick out anyway. Down to the midsection, and here comes LaRue. Tag made by the Tragedy Boys. And what is this? A double sent on. Referee out of position again, unfortunately. They might have been able to get him with that one. But there's a few extra seconds allowed Knight to get in. Or excuse me, allowed Profit to get in. And now Knight just fingers to the eyes. And the Ruse Knight is sure where he's at. The fans say that was weak, but a thumb to the eye is always effective because it doesn't matter how big you are, your eyes are always vulnerable. Although the Ruse, not the largest individual, individuals himself. With the exception of Saturn, however, there really is no one of mass size in this match. A lot of quick maneuvers, and here comes Profit. We should see some good double team maneuvers coming up here. I mean, look at that! Not exactly precision as Knight is still seeing a few stars. But effective. And a sleeper being applied now by Profit. Known for submission and oh, and he's known for hair pulling too. Make no mistake, there was no power involved in there. He does not possess a lot of power, but he knows the tricks. Hair pulling definitely works, and choking on the second rope works. Forearm shot by Prophet and a tag, and that's what that team has to do. That's what they are known for: quick tags in and out. Cutting that ring in half, look at that. Trying to bring Price in and allowing more double teaming. Price should know better than that. 
Oh, now, come on, you're not going to get a pin like that. I don't care what double team maneuver you use. And that is just the sheer ego of Dirty Dexon. He likes to call himself a back alley brawler these days. I don't know how much brawling he actually does in the back alley. Like I th I've heard he's scared of back alleys, particularly at night, but nonetheless. Throwing several right hands now. Look at that, left hands, left, right, left, right. Taking LaRue down. Snap there, takes him over. Another quick tag. Brings in Profit. Who applies that arm bar. And a kick to the midsection by Daxi before exiting the ring. And as I said earlier, Profit likes to work on those joints to go for a submission. He doesn't really have the body weight for any high impact maneuvers. So he focuses on those joints. And that's what he's doing now. Looks like he's focusing on that left shoulder. And the rule pushing into the corner, but the wrong corner. That's not the corner you want to be in. I guess he couldn't quite see where he was at while being held in that front face lock. Unfortunate for him. Oh, wow. Solid right hand. And another. on clothesline, looks for a backdrop, but he telegraphed it. Sunset flip on this day, uh, Canadian destroyer attempt, a variant. Not sure exactly what he was going for, but it was effective. Now, can he make the tag? Can he make the tag? Oh, there's no way he's gonna make it. Dax has a hold of the ankle already, and LaRue just doesn't have the energy. Oh, it's a day! That got him off. Now can he do it? Now can he do it? Yes! The tag is made! Here comes Seven! Oh, and he just bulldozes over Profit. He says, come on, boys, and elbow as well. He's willing to take them both off. Close line from hell. He's the size of both of these individuals combined. Back and forth, corner clothesline. Inverted atomic drop. And a big boot. And now Profit is all by himself. As he said it before. Oh, it looks like he's out. This has got to be it. One, two. Oh, he's got the robes. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Saturn is not. Hey, oh, let's go, he says. Saturn not frustrated. We're going to tag. To Gaston. Double team coming up here. That's got to do it. One. Oh, I don't believe it. Dax somehow aware of what was going on. Made a desperation leap to break that up. That's the only thing that stopped that pinfall. And now all four men in the ring. Just exchanging shots. Dax the first one down. And now Profit down. That's the Tragedy Boys with a double Irish whip. Oh, they both ducked underneath. Double fingers to the eyes. Double super kicks. Price to oh, another one. Price to the outside. And now one for LaRue as well. He is the legal man. And now the Backstreet Boys, High Times, whatever you want to call them. He can't even get them up. I can't believe it. You got to go for something. 
Nicely done. Is that going to be enough? One, two. No, it is not. Dax obviously showing weakness when he was unable to get LaRue up on his shoulders. Obviously, everybody here is breathing heavy. What a hard fuck. Oh, yeah, take that away from him. This prophet was about to use that bat. But Saturn, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The other bat. Dexy has the other bat. Oh, come on. Oh, the referee doesn't even see it. Oh, now she turns around. One. Oh, come on, look at the bat. It's still in the ring. Look at that, he's still got the bat in his head. Come on, referee. I guess she doesn't want to be in the ring with him while he's wielding that bat. I can't say I blame her. Underhanded victory. Blatant use of the foreign objects. An unbelievable ovation for Jordan Dye. A lot of fans packed Odd Bodies Music Room, and he is one of the individuals they came to see. Quite a card here today, but Matt Vengeance is being checked over now momentarily. Not shaken in the least. He is one wrestler who has spent a lot of years in XVW. The bell has rung, this one officially begun. Right in the center of the ring. Benjamin is larger and more experienced. The speed unquestionably will go with Jordan Dye. But Jordan has enough experience. I don't really think the experience factor is going to play that big of a role. Nice go behind. Look at that. Nice series of maneuvers. Allows Jordan to come up with that side headlock. And notice how he dropped to one knee to use Vengeance's own weight against him to put pressure on that neck. Vengeance gets out. Look at he's winding up that arm and applies the headlock. And now he has the side headlock on. Jordan down to one knee. If you notice when he drops to one knee, that prevents his neck from being bent. Smart maneuver. Because Vengeance was not leading his weight in. Obviously, Jordan saw that, relieved the pressure, and that's how he got out of it. Both men jockeying for position again. They're on the ropes. The referee should be calling for a break. Letting him go at it. Now back in the center of the ring. Who's going to come up with the... Wait a minute. They're going to the outside. And they were determined. Nobody really came up with the advantage, so then it just threw out a knife edge chop. And now Jordan retaliates back and forth here. Are they even aware that the count is being applied? Vengeance kind of in a little bit, just enough to break the count. It's been but a reversal into the railing. And Jordan follows him in. What's he gonna do here? Oh, all the way across, oh, but he got caught and got slammed on the railing himself. I said that, to you right after that 
railing is unforgiving. Big massive shot on the outside by Vengeance. Almost this entire bout has taken place outside. Up on the shoulders now, Vengeance. What's he gonna do? Guy fights his way out of it. Delivers a knee. And Dai has, well, he has one leg in the ring. Finally getting back in the ring. Coming off the ropes. Oh, big suicide dive. He wasn't in the ring very long. As he drives vengeance into that railing. And now vengeance being forced into the ring. Uh-oh. Up to the top goes Jordan Dye. Vengeance out of the way, however. Catches Dye coming back in. And delivers a running forearm shot in the corner. Does Vengeance. Follows it up once again. Vengeance, he likes the slow paced match. He doesn't like to waste any energy if he can help it. And now just pulling at the face of Jordan. And notice that. Matt just standing there as the referee admonishes him. He does not waste any energy if he can help it. Jordan fighting back now. Nice European uppercut. Kick to the knee, several shots. Insiguri kick takes vengeance down. Limping a bit is Jordan. May have torn something when he came off that top rope. Delivers a forearm shot in the corner of his own. Out of the corner, here comes Guy. European uppercut. Basement drop kick in the corner. Throws him on the mat, goes for the cover, hooks the leg. Oh, put on the ropes. I couldn't quite see from my vantage point did uh, Violet Misery have anything to do with that, him reaching the ropes? I don't know, I could not quite tell. I wouldn't put it past her. Vengeance going after the leg, off the ropes. Move to the side of the head. Spinning heel kick. Oh, wow, what a neck breaker. That's the cover one, but he doesn't hook the leg. He should have hooked the leg. As you can see, Jordan's still feeling the effects of that neck breaker. Forearm shots by Vengeance. As he takes Jordan to the corner. Out of strip, sends him all the way across. Here comes Vengeance, but he got caught with a boot. Caught with both boots that time. Ducks underneath, does Jordan. Belly to back suplex. And now, a couple of rights and lefts. And Looks like he's got, what is that? Is he gonna tap? He had that rear naked choke on, but I thought Vengeance was signaling he was gonna tap, but apparently not. He got to the ropes. I don't know, I quit. That looked like he was signaling he was tapping. But the ref was right there. He had the bird's eye view. But Jordan is pumped now. He thinks he had victory. He is sensing victory. Solid forearm shot. And a, re a return by Jordan back and forth. Who's gonna get the upper hand here? Now open hand slaps. 
Shades of Will Smith, I guess. He missed with that right hand. Kick down low. And a diving forearm smash. That was a lot. Referee calling for the bell. I'm not sure of this. The referee has called for the bell. This match ends in a time limit draw. Time limit draw? I was not keeping track of the time here. Apparently the referee was. And now Austin James. One half of our competitors have been introduced. And participants number three. Oh, I know whose music this is. Oh, where is he? He is the monkey toting funny man. Yes, there he is. Banky the Clown. That man never dealt with this clown. Competitors thus far, and one to go. Oh, I, I think Blevins is afraid of that monkey. He's uh, you got monkey phobia or something like that. He's going to have his hands full in this match. As all four of them come to, Oh, look at Spanky checking out the referee. Hey, he, he gets confused sometimes. I mean, he's taken quite a few cream pies to the face. And now, who is going to become new number one contender for the XBW King of the Valley Championship. And as I said earlier, the King of the Valley Championship is extremely, extremely um, important because when you hold that championship, you can turn it in at any time you want to. 
get a title shot at the XPW Heavyweight Championship, at the Next Gen Championship, perhaps pick a partner for the Tag Team Championship, I guess even the Women's Championship. I don't know. But it is extremely prestigious. Whoever wins this match will be the number one contender for that championship. Thank you, the clown already taken out. We're down to three, but a nice DDT. And we're down to two already. This could be the shortest fatal four-way of all time. Animal Rex just powering, powering him up. What's he gonna do with him? Away slam! Spanking the clown, taking a cheap shot on the outside. Hannibal has the ring all to him. Well, just for a moment, here comes Spanky. Here's his opportunity. Not a lot behind that shot. Rex didn't really feel it. Oh, here's a bunch more. Oh! Everybody thought he was going to chop him! Twisted the nipples a little bit. And David Chase now coming in. Delivering several kicks to the skirt of area. Austin James sees an opportunity, attacks from behind. Seeing an opportunity, that's what that championship is all about. The King of the Valley Championship, finding your opportunity, turning it in, getting that shot at whatever title you want. These guys so far have seen that they can indeed take advantage of opportunities. But when is it gonna ooh, look at that evil look on that evil clown. Oh dear. All four men in the ring is I thought they were all gonna go at go at it at once! But they split into pairs. Probably the smart thing to do. This way you only have to focus on one competitor at a time. Although, at the same time, you've got to watch all competitors because they might get a fall and you're not even looking at it. And you lost it just like that. Running clothes on, takes out. Takes out Chase. Nope, he's right back in. I thought he was done. That's that youth. Rex now. Big choking. Choking power slam, but Spanky taking advantage. He can get he got it! And that's what I'm talking about. Taking advantage of an opportunity. And that's the kind of mentality you've got to have if you're King of the Valley champion. Spanky the Clown just showed that he may have exactly what it takes to be a successful King of the Valley champion. He's now your number one contender. Can he take advantage of this and win that championship when he gets his Title shot against Gary Tonight, we've got a women's title match as Maddie Exodus has her first defense of the XVW Women's Championship against my guest at this time, Sarah Bubbles. Welcome to XVW, and wow, a title shot right off the bat. You best believe it's a title shot, and it's the one that Maddie is not going to keep. Once I get in there with her, she's going to see exactly what it means when Sarah Bubbles bursts her bubble. When Sarah Bubbles burst her bubbles, what are we going to see tonight, fans? Obviously customizing the XVW Women's Championship belt as she plans on holding it for quite some time. A belt which has just been handed over to our ring announcer. Eddie, 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 and the chant of Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. Bubbles, this is her debut match for XVW. Just imagine if she walked out of here as a champion in her first match. I had a chance to 
talked with her earlier. She said she was here to burst the bubble of the champion. Who wants a test of strength right now? I'm not sure if this is a good idea. Obviously, the champion is the smaller of the two. And I think she just got outsmarted as well. Bubbles applying that side headlock. You can hear the cries of pain from the champion. Oh, nice. Popped right out there. Nice reversal. Head to headlock the only for a moment. And a shoulder block takedown by the challenger. Off the ropes, he comes. Nice hip toss. Drag takes the challenger down. Bubba says, Get her away from me. Just a moment ago, she wouldn't to get right to the match. Now she's saying get her back. Apparently she has a little more respect for the champion than she did initially. She better watch out. Nice on the leg trip, one. Two count by the referee. Oh, a handful of hair here. Takes her over by the hair. Into the corner, back elbow smash. And another one. And again, throws her by the hair. The three says nothing about the hair. Double X handle. And again, the crowd. Maddie, Maddie, who's being choked on the second rope now. Challenger definitely knows how to take advantage of a five count. Several kicks to the back. And Maddie again trying to climb her way up, but put herself in a very, very bad position. Look at that, getting choked out. Bubble saying, don't mess with me, ref. Into the corner goes the champion. Bubble saying, come on, come on. What would you throw her in the corner for then? Here comes the champion. Nice forearm shot, a couple of them. Not enough to take the challenger down, however. Throws her back to the corner. Irish whip, but a reversal by the champion. And here she comes with a corner clothesline. Another forearm shot. Oh, big slam! Scooped her up with ease. You can hear the champion screaming. Plants her right in the center of the ring. One, two, only a two count. Champion is an individual who always is at a size disadvantage. Not exactly one of your larger competitors. Although she might be bigger than Travis Alexander Prophet. I don't know. I, I've never seen them side by side. Oh, by the hell! Wow! Can you imagine being feeled across the ring by your hair? Holy mackerel. I bet she has strands of hair under her fingernails. And again, the chant of Maddie, Maddie. And she's fighting back. Flying clothes on. Out of the corner again. Another one. Three in a row, perhaps. Yes. Goes to the cover. One, two. Only a two count. Oh, frustration by the chair. Uh-oh. She wasn't paying attention. And the challenger took advantage. Applies that chin lock and leans that weight on the champion. That'll definitely wear down a smaller opponent. 
Crowd clapping, trying to give the champion their energy. And she's feeding off of it. But again, a handful of hair just throws the champion to the ground. I must say, Bubbles has been making it look easy for the most part, for the most part, but is not following it in, following up with it like she should. Reversal by the champion now. She comes into the corner for that back elbow. Trying to throw her again, it looks like. Irish whip into the ropes this time. Cross body block. But it was like a hitting a brick wall. And that's the size difference. The champion is down, but again. Bubbles is not following up. Double leg trip takes the champion down. Couple of knee lifts by the champion. Oh, she is frustrated. She is focused. One, two, only a two count. I have to say, there have been a few opportunities where the challenger really hit the champion on the run but failed to follow through. And again, doing it again. What is she waiting for? Just wanting to show how much she can absorb. And you're not gonna win a championship that way. And now goes face first into the mat. And that's it. Show, be ready for the bulls, cause they ain't slow, sit right in the front 